the channel. Happy Friday. I don't know what's happening here. What is this? <laughs> um, my name is Aziza, aka Gourmet Pens. Today we are playing with a pen that is not new. It doesn't belong to me, but I feel like it's a fitting time to do a video on this because they're about to be re-released. If that hasn't given it away, and if this hasn't given it away, the pen is a Conid fountain pen. I'm just going to say straight up, I'm not a patent lawyer. I don't know all the details of their filling system and the patents and the patents that exist or expired and all that stuff. I'm just here to share my interest in the pen and show it to you. So I'm not going to go into all of the stuff. I did some research. I did some reading on it. I'm going to share with you a little bit about the filling mechanism. But if you are interested in um, the new pens that are coming out that have a similar filling style, please go ahead and do your research because I don't know enough about it to make a comment or even have an opinion. So I'm going to not say anything about that. This pen is the Conid King Size bulk filler. It's not my pen. I have two of the Minimalisticas and I have in the past used the round top king size as well as the regular. Way back in the day for FP Geeks I did a review of um, Thomas Hall's Conid, one of his regulars, and it's so funny because back then I really, I was very new to the world of premium and unusual fountain pens and I remember thinking I was like I don't understand the appeal of this pen and now I really love them so it's really fun how your taste and, and opinions can change and grow so what one thing I really like about Conid is the simple packaging it comes in like a metal box it's very industrial it shows the makers which I think is really cool like the little team and it comes with a polishing cloth it comes with the user guide, which is very important if you don't know how to use the filling mechanism. It's just a photo. And on the back, some more photo. And then the pen sits in here. One thing I find interesting is that you have to pay for the tools to disassemble your Conid. I actually don't think that's terrible. I prefer to... I, I kind of prefer that system because if you have, say, three Conids, you don't need the cost of tools built into the pen each time you buy it. And so, but on the other hand, if you are buying it used, for example, and you don't have the tools, you can always purchase the tools. So I, I like that. I like that it's available. And I like how the packaging is just simple. It's not wasteful. On the back, it tells you what um, what model you have ordered and the name of the person so this is not mine and it's just really basic simple packaging but very secure so the pen of course you're most interested in the pen here is the Conid bulk filler this one is a king size demonstrator I'm just reading the box because there's so many details to it um, titanium trim Okay, so here's the letters. K, D, C, B, D, B, F, T, T, I. So K is king size. <laughs> D, C is demons. I think that's a C, demonstrator. Anyway. I can describe it to you. It's a king size with titanium trim. It's a full demonstrator. It has the titanium section. It's a number eight Bach nib. And... That's about that. Let's do, let me just explain a little bit about the filling system and I'm going to share a video clip of how I filled it just so you can see because there are some ways to do it and of course they show it in the packaging but sometimes it's just nice to see it. It is a hybrid of both piston and vacuum filling mechanisms and the goal of the bulk filler is that uh, Francis Rosens has said, he is, he is um, one of the founders of Conid, um, he has said the bulk filler is designed for those who want the best possible ink capacity and it has a double reservoir that's designed to be leak proof, so that's the double reservoir right there, 
Um, I don't know why my light is flickering, sorry. Let me try to fix that. That's the double reservoir in there. Um, it's ideal for intense use, people, for who, people who want to travel light, not having to bring extra ink to wherever they want to travel. I, that's one of the things that I really love about it. I love the large ink capacity because I put really chonky nibs on my conids and it, they just burn through the ink. And I just really like it. I like demonstrators. I like how it looks and I enjoy it. In fact, if you didn't know, I just started a podcast with a friend, a couple friends, and we discuss the conid and we talk about from my point of view, why I like it so much, and my friend's point of view, where she doesn't really care about them. So I will link to that so you can check it out um, if you want. It's called the Gourmet Pens Club, and it's a podcast, and we have fun. Anyway, uh, there are three steps to filling the pen. The first step is to unscrew the piston knob, which is this, opens the seal of the writing reservoir. This is also how you get ink into your writing reservoir. And that's how you empty it like for traveling. I absolutely love this filling system. I love I love how it looks. I love the simplicity of it. I mean it's not simple but it is simple to enjoy. And um, then you pull the rod back, you screw it into the piston in the back, and then you can depress the whole thing and then it creates a vacuum. So I like it. I really do. And I also like that you can kind of modulate your ink flow by not having too much ink in there or shutting it off and for me it just it's really enjoyable um so it's an intuitive system once you get the hang of it of course it, it is true it's not the fastest system in the world it's not as quick as i don't know an eyedropper but you know it certainly does the job and the ink capacity ranges from 2.5 mils to 6 mils, depending on the model. I, I really like it. Let's talk about the pen. Let's look at the pen. On the top of the cap, in this particular case, it's a flat top. You have the Conid logo. You can get, or in the past, you used to be able to get your clip engraved. It says Fountain Bell Conid, so bulk filler. Uh, Fountain Bell is Francis Gossens. Um, Antwerp, because they're made in Belgium. And, I mean, it's really interesting. It's kind of an industrial looking pen, which is totally fine. It's not going to appeal to everyone because it's not colorful and all that, but some people don't like that. I, I, I don't know what it is about it. I really like it. And it's a really tough pen. So the king size is pretty big, but like it's a just oversize. I've got a lineup of pens here to share with you. So here is the king size, here's a Mont Blanc 149, here are two Minimalisticas, and here's a Mont Blanc 146. We don't really need to focus on the others because this is kind of a comparison. I think most people have seen a 149, I hope. And if not, here, here's a Lamy Safari. So it's, it's much bigger than all of these pens, but it's also thicker. And it's a little heavy, so some people might not like that, but I mean, there's also like, I don't know, three mils of ink in this thing, right? So there you go in terms of size. And now let's look at it a little more. If we uncap, so the section is, you know, you'd think it'd be slippery. It is not at all. It is kind of brushed. It has a bit of like grip to it. Everything is just, everything functions really nicely together. In hand, I thought that the king size would be too big for me. It is not. It's actually quite comfy and the balance is just bang on does it post i mean it does post actually i wouldn't do it because it makes the pen huge but you could do it anyway the nib i have on here is a bach number eight it is a 14 karat gold double broad again it's not mine let's write with it and then i can tell you a little bit about why people really love of course it's dried out now oh <laughs> i guess i should put some ink into the reservoir um i'll tell you why people really or tend to really love these because i do now this nib is over polished it's not my nib i just know that it's over polished so here we go conid bo 
silk filler. Oh, it's just so nice. It, it, it's really a nice writer. I, I truly thoroughly enjoy this pen and the comfort and how it feels. King size. We have a double broad nib. Here is the ink flow. It is really quite juicy. I would put this a 9 out of 10 on the juice factor, on the juice scale. Um, so one of the things that is really interesting about Conid is that you can, for example, you can shop at Flexible Nib Factory. No affiliation, I just really like them. And you can get collars that accommodate different nibs to put into your pen. So for example, on this one, you can get collars to hold Sailor 21 Karat King of Pen Nibs, um, Mont Blanc 149, I believe Pelican M1000. Just to give you an example, here on my Minimalistica, which is a number six size, I have a collar for a Pelican M800 nib. And in this case, I have an O3B on it. So it's really cool. It makes your nib collection more usable. And that's, I have a big nib collection because I enjoy different styles of nibs. Um, on this one, I have a Bach music nib with rose gold plating. So you can also put like platinibs, platinum nibs, uh, pilot number five, pilot number 10. There's just so many possibilities that I think the pen is a very cool vehicle for ink, but also for versatility. So as I said, this pen, it, th sorry, this um, nib is slightly overpolished, but it's holding up pretty well. It has a really small sweet spot, and because this pen is not tuned for me, because it's not my pen, um, I'm not hitting the sweet spot properly. But it's not doing pretty bad. Uh, not doing too bad. There. Oh, so so this is where it's it's kind of a stubby nib. Now, as I said, I don't really know about the details of the patent. I don't know what Conid owns or doesn't own or what. I think whoever can make these pens more available to us, thank you. Because Conid has historically been really difficult to get a hold of them because they had such limited manufacturing time. And now they're re-releasing on October 25th exclusively through Penworld in Belgium which I think is really cool. However, uh, currently it's only the Antwerp model, which is uh, like a red Juma type model. And you can get the regular, the demonstrator, the king size, sorry, the regular, the king size, and uh, in varying degrees of demonstrator. So you can't particularly get this one, at least for now. And so they're going to a stock basis as opposed to order made-to-order basis. And this is great, but I know for sure they're going to run out and they're not going to have enough for everyone who wants to enjoy these pens. So if there's anyone out there listening who can make these pens and it's not violating some patent or something, I think that we should so that we can all enjoy the, the, the pleasures of a pen like this where the ink capacity is huge and the filling system is like leak-proof. It's just really fantastic. So... If that upsets you, I'm sorry that it upsets you. I don't see why it would, but if you want to explain, please do in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about Conid in the comments because I, at least amongst my friends, there are, or there's a division of people who really love Conid to people who just don't get it and don't care at all. And I think all opinions are valid and no one's really right or wrong, unless there are actual facts involved. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm not judging this pen based on this nib because this nib is not mine and it's not tuned for me. And I believe that usually there's a Mont Blanc nib on here, but it was removed for so that I could um, borrow it for a couple months. I really 
really like it. Okay, let's go do some side writing and then we will come back to wrap up. Okay, there is our wrap up. I could probably talk forever about this pen. I will just say that my favorite, I think I said this already, my favorite size is the Minimalistica. I also really like the regular. So while I enjoy the king size, it's not really something that I would purchase. These are not inexpensive. We are looking at something like 700 euros to 1000 euros. And they're hard to get. And um, they're very limited in terms of the uh, models currently, and so it's not for everyone, but I think that it's for some of us. And if it's for you, that's fantastic, and I hope you're able to get one. I'll put links below so you could check out the websites that are relevant and all of that business. Otherwise, let's wrap up. I've rambled a lot. I hope this was a fair presentation of this pen. It's really hard because um, it's it's out of my control as to who can get a Conid and when they're coming back and the patents and all that business, but I enjoy using them and I enjoy the versatility, so I just wanted to share that with you. So my friends, of course it's drying out or skipping. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have a Conid? Do you want a Conid? Do you think it's completely insane? I'm just curious. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have an absolutely delightful weekend. Take care and we'll see you next time.